Hello friends and welcome to Hit Bullseye. My name is Manish and in this video I'm going to tell you most interesting events in India and the world that have happened in the third week of September 2022. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do so so that you get updates about all these videos as and when we post them. From national to international, from sports to miscellaneous, from movies to economics, so many things happen every day. But perhaps in this you know, flood of information, there is a lot of, uh, you know, this is, the, this is the age of information basically. So the task really is not to identify what to do. It is actually identifying what not to do. And we help you solve that dilemma by presenting to you the most important facts that you cannot simply afford to miss during a week. And it is in this quest that we are helping you identify the most relevant areas for all the competitive exams of your needs. So let us see what all has happened in the third week of September that is relevant for all exams point of view. Good or bad, so many things happen in every week. So let's say, for example, India's first forest university is going to be set up. Perhaps it's, it was long overdue that human beings start giving important position to biodiversity, climate, ecology that we have started giving now. So it's too late, but you know, it's never too late actually. We have got our first forest university, a dedicated forest university. We'll say where it is going to be set up. India's first Swachh Sujal Pradesh. So, you know, somehow the second news is also related to cleanliness, hygiene, environment, ecology, sustainability, and something like that. Third, so if you do not do these things, what happens? Typhoons, extreme weather events, and that is how the nature is reacting to, to the mess that human beings have created on the planet. So typhoon, none at all, has hit Japan and has caused a lot of destruction. You know, then breaking the trend of climate related discussions, we have Miss Swati Piramal, who is an industrialist. We will see why she has been making news this week. Then China and UAE, China and United Arab Emirates, are set to join hands on moon rover missions. So taking a you know, further leap in uh, technological collaboration for outer space missions, both these countries are going to join their hands. India is set to host the next Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit 2023, now that the 2022 summit has just been held in Samarkand, which is in Uzbekistan. Next year, India is going to host it. So we'll see some facts about that. Then India's first lithium ion cell factory is going to be set up, which also indicates the measures the human beings are collectively taking to tackle climate change. Again, something related to the broader theme that we had discussed in the first three news, that we are moving on to renewable energy, we are moving on to you know, electric vehicles and all. And India's first lithium ion cell, fact ion cell factory indicates that we are actually trying to transition to an EV-led vehicle growth. Cello show. What is a cello show? So if some of you know what Gujarati is, you know, if you're aware of uh, uh, the Gujarati language, you would know what is a cello show. This is India's official entry to the 2023 Oscars in the best foreign language film category. So we will see what this movie is about. Then World Alzheimer's Day 2022 was observed this week. Mr. Bajrang Punia has made India proud, not once, not twice, not thrice, four times, which is a record for an Indian in wrestling. We will see which medal he has won and what is the significance of that. He has created a record, basically. Then the PM Cares Fund, which was in news for all the wrong reasons during the COVID-19 times due to its opacity, has now got a very, uh, you know, a person in whom majority of Indians pose their trust. We will see who that person is. And then Mr. Elvis Ali. You know, this name might be confusing to some of you, whether it is Elvis Presley or whether it's Muhammad Ali. So we will see who is Elvis Ali and why he has been in news. Let's take a look at all these news one by one. Some created quite interesting ones this week, in fact. So India's first forest university is going to be set up. So this is the Forest College and Research Institute, FCRI, which is already there. 
and it is in Telangana. It is in Telangana. So under the Forest University Act of 2022, it is going to be converted into a university. It will be the first of its kind in India. Globally, it will be the third university of forestry after Russia and China. So it seems that we are not alone, you know, in taking a action quite long overdue for, uh, you know, doing research and development on forestry. Only Russia and China have done it. You know, and I'm quite surprised the USA hasn't done it. Anyway, so Telangana government has decided to expand this FCRI, Forestry College and Research Institute in Hyderabad to make it a full-fledged university. So this institute already exists, but making it a full-fledged university is something taking the next step. It's a welcome step. You know, maybe they'll research on uh, different types of forests, how to increase the forest cover of India. And just for your reference, the forest cover of India is approximately 21 to 22%. And this needs to be increased to 33% according to the national forest policy. One third of area has to be the forest area or, uh, you know, a tree area for the environment to be sustainable. Moving ahead to the second news, India's first Swachh Sujal Pradesh. Swachh means clean, Sujal means clean, pure water. So India's first Swachh Sujal Pradesh. Let's see what this news is. Union Jal Shakti Minister. So Jal Shakti is the new name of the Union Ministry of Water and you know drinking water and resources. So new Jal Shakti Minister is Mr. Gajendra Singh Shekhawat. He has declared Andaman and Nicobar Islands, which is a Union territory as India's first Swachh Sujal Pradesh. All villages on the Andaman and Nicobar Islands have received the Har Ghar Jal certification and have been verified as ODF plus free. So two achievements that all the villages in Andaman and Nicobar have achieved. Number one, they are all Har Ghar Jal villages, which means that tapped water connection has reached each and every household in all these villages. That means 100% piped water connection has been made possible. Second achievement, all of them are ODF plus. When we say ODF, which was the target set under the Swachh Bharat Mission Phase 1 and had to be completed by 2019, that was to make India open defecation free by constructing toilets. That was done in the first phase. In the second phase, which was launched in 2019, the target was to make every village ODF plus. Now this plus means that there has to be behavioral change among the people. So it's not that toilet is constructed, but still people are defecating in the open. There has to be behavioral change. And also, it needs to be coupled with waste management. So whatever fecal waste is being generated, it needs to be treated, it needs to be taken care of. So solid waste management is something that is the next level of creating a ODF plus village and all the villages in Andaman Nicobar have achieved that and hence it has become the first Swachh Sujal Pradesh that means whatever wastewater they are generating it is being treated so that way it is a Swachh Sujal and also uh, so Har Jal that means piped water connection is there so water is clean whether it is for drinking and whether it is the grey water and the black water that is being are generated, it is also being treated. So that way, Andaman and Nicobar is the first Swachh Sujal Pradesh, which is quite an achievement, I would say. Right, safe and secure drinking water supply and its management is a crucial aspect in this. So there are three important components of Sujal and Swachh Pradesh. Number one, safe and secure drinking water supply, tick, ODF plus, ODF sustainability and solid and liquid waste management, tick, solid and liquid waste management is being done. Then cross-cutting interventions like convergence, IEC, action planning, etc. All these things are also being done. Tick. So all the boxes have been ticked and we plan on doing this or replicating this model across all the states and union territories in India. Starting with, of course, Andaman and Nicobar. So it's a pretty good news, you know, such a positive news, I would say. But cup you know followed by not a very not so positive news so we have had a typhoon in japan japan i think uh, 
is uh, one of the most technologically advanced countries in the world but geographically it is at a disadvantaged position so if you look at the world map you will find that japan is at the edge of the pacific plate so the world as a whole the globe as a whole is divided into various plates like the pacific plate the australian plate the eurasian plate and these are huge giant pieces of rock you know on which the entire globe is based all the continents and all the oceans are based and these plates are constantly moving they are either you know pushing past each other or they are coming together or they are growing apart so during all these movements a lot of energy is generated you know that gen that energy that gets accumulated when it releases it is generally in the form of either volcanic eruptions or earthquakes and such earthquakes below the ocean surface give rise to tsunamis you know so these are some of the uh, natural calamities that japan is not new to it has always been battering these tsunamis and earthquakes and all but typhoon is also a climatic feature especially you know due to the wind system that it has to bear so here you have the map of japan right and this is how the typhoon moves so this is the trajectory of the typhoon from this to this direction and from this to this direction basically this is how the typhoon moves and the name of the typhoon is nanmadol it has recorded furious winds and rainfall in several parts of japan it is one of the biggest storms to hit japan in years so prime minister of japan fumio kishida you know is taking stock of the situation and japan meteorological agency have you know predicted heavy rains high waves gales and storm surges and typhoon is you know uh, if we talk about the naming of these weather phenomenon so typhoon is a name of this weather phenomenon in this part of the world near japan it is known by different names in other parts like it is known as cyclone in some places like in india in uh, you know in, in your usa it is known as cyclone then we know them as willy willies near australia you know willy willy cyclones uh, then you have uh, typhoons and then they are known as hurricanes near caribbean near the caribbean it's known as hurricane so similar type of phenomenon but different names in different parts of the world next uh, miss swati piramal so miss swati piramal has been in news she is the vice chairperson of piramal group and she has been conferred the highest civilian award of france the knight of the legion of honor she has been conferred this award this is the highest french civilian award so it's like the counterpart of bharat ratna in india the highest civilian award of france it comes in recognition of her outstanding achievements and contribution in the field of business and industry science medicine art and culture both nationally and internationally so owing to her achievements in all these fields this great honor is being bestowed upon her and in fact just two weeks back we had seen the similar award being conferred on mr shashi tharoor for his contribution to furthering india french relationship so that news also we had seen right the award was presented to her by kathleen colonna minister of europe for foreign affairs and on behalf of president emmanuel macron so mr emmanuel macron is the president of france and on his behalf this award was conferred so two indians who have got this award shashi tharoor and miss swati piramal next china and uae set to join hands for moon rover mission so furthering you know taking a further step in stepping up their uh, space collaboration china and uae have agreed to join hands you know the mohammed bin rashid space center of uae and china national space agency cnsa have joined this mou to work together on uae's moon mission so both of them will collaborate it is the first joint space project between these two countries in which uae so what these two countries will do let's see uae will develop a rover dubbed rashid 2 so rover is like a vehicle that actually 
lands on the surface of the moon and it you know roves over the surface of the moon it's like a car moving on the surface of the moon so this will be developed by uae and china will help with the landing data transmission observation and control so all these technicalities will be taken care of by china and the rover will be designed by the uae right so this is something that's going to be a good collaboration in space we do need good collaborations next india to host sco summit in 2023 recently the 2022 summit has taken place and uh, it was in samarkand in uzbekistan and the next year it is going to be in india delhi will hold the presidency of the grouping for a year until next year september and india will host the summit recently it was in samarkand which is in uzbekistan right uh, so presidency has passed on to india so if we talk about the shanghai cooperation organization it is a grouping which is led by china and it was started as shanghai five it was started as shanghai five and the countries were the founders include china russia kazakhstan kyrgyzstan and tajikistan these were the five countries that started it in 2001 and its original name was shanghai five with these five members later on uzbekistan was added and it led to the name being changed to shanghai cooperation organization sco now we were not concerned much india was not much concerned with sco till this point but in 2017 india and pakistan both were included as full-time members so india and pakistan became members in 2017 and then it became a direct concern for us and last year in 2021 iran was added as the ninth member so this is now the composition of shanghai cooperation organization and it is quite uh, you know a factor a uh, quite a uh, you know reason for the US's anxiety because it has Iran it has Russia it has China all the three sort of adversaries of USA Iran and Russia for sure and China uh, you know sort of an adversary of course so this is a grouping which India has a member and India is also a strategic partner of USA and most of the Western countries so it's a kind of a balancing act that India is trying to do here and India hosting the SEO summit you know takes the stakes even a step further but India is undeterred by that and is taking its position quite firmly next India's first lithium-ion cell factory is going to be established this has been announced by Minister of State for Electronics and IT Rajiv Chandrasekhar so this will be in Tirupati Andhra Pradesh this factory is going to be set up it will be set up by Chennai based Munoth Industries Limited with an outlay of 165 crores you know India is uh, taking such steps because of two reasons one is to make India self-dependent or independent in this kind of technology because when the COVID-19 hit us the global supply chains got disrupted and we were at the receiving end of it so many supply chains so many uh, assembly lines so many productions of products took a halt because we were not able to get all these items imported so now we have decided under the Atmanirbha Bharat Abhyan to become self-sufficient in at least these critical technologies and as a part of it India had launched the national semiconductor mission as well national semiconductor mission and as in pursuance of that recently a major deal was signed between Vedanta and Foxconn Foxconn is world's largest semiconductor manufacturing company from Taiwan and it has partnered with Indian based company Vedanta and they are setting up a semiconductor manufacturing plant in Gujarat 
So last week it won it was the news because of the competition between Gujarat and Maharashtra. And finally Gujarat has been chosen and it entails an investment of more than 20 billion dollars. That is 1.6 lakh crore rupees of investment which is a huge number. It will not only create lakhs of jobs in Indian industry directly or indirectly but it will also make help making India independent in semiconductor manufacturing which is a very crucial component of all the electronics items. So in that you know lithium ion battery also is a sort of product that will make India self dependent in EV technology that is electric vehicles technology. Batteries are going to play a crucial role in the next era of transportation which will be electricity led. So next is a very interesting news, Chalo Show. Chalo Show is a Gujarati movie. It's a drama about a young boy's love affair with cinema in a village in Saurashtra region of Gujarat. This is India's official entry for the next year's Academy Awards, that is Oscar Awards by the Film Federation of India. So the English meaning of Chalo Show is the last film show. It is in English and uh, it is directed by Pan Nalan and it was released in theatres on 14th of October. Right, so these awards are going to be held in March 2023 in Los Angeles. Till date, in the last 95 years since the Academy Awards have been, uh, are being organised, there are only three movies that have made it to the finals of the nomination category. All the movies of India have been rejected at the first screening stage itself. The three movies that have made it to the top are Rosa, Bombay and Lagan. These are the three movies that have gone to the shortlisting stage where nine movies are shortlisted and one gets the award. And the category is Best Foreign Language Film because the Oscars are in English and Indian movies are of course in either a regional language like this was in Gujarati or Hindi or Tamil or Telugu, any regional language. So the category is best foreign language film and no movie has ever won it from India. Cello show, it's an important fact you know that what is India's official entry. Next World Alzheimer's Day. Basically, uh, since the world is talking more and more about uh, mental health issues now, Alzheimer's is something that we have started taking seriously. So the World Alzheimer's Day is celebrated on 21st of September to bring awareness about neurological disorders. So it is the most common cause of dementia and affects the person's memory, mental ability and ability to carry out simple tasks. That is what Alzheimer's is. So the theme for this year was no dementia, no Alzheimer's. So that is how close a link between Alzheimer's and dementia is. On this day, seminars, public activities are held in communities around the world so that people are made aware about what Alzheimer's is and how family care and personal affection can actually help the person recover or to live a normal life or as close as normal life really possible. So I think we need to talk about such issues quite a lot and that is why this particular event was celebrated. So here is the hero, the hero of this week, Mr. Bajrang Punia. He has won a medal in the World Wrestling Championship. Not once, not twice, not thrice, the fourth time. So Mr. Bajrang Punia has won a bronze medal after defeating Dalit Niyazbekov in Kazakhstan in the men's freestyle 65 kg category in World Wrestling Championships 2022. It's not his first medal. It was his fourth medal at the World Championship, which is a big deal. So he won the silver medal in 2018, bronze medals in 2013 and 2019. That means a gold medal is still elusive, but that level of consistency that he has shown at the World Championships is something enviable. He has been already India's most successful wrestler at the World Championships and with this fourth medal, he has cemented his position even further. We hope uh, Mr. Punia gets a gold medal in the 2024 Paris Olympics and we also wish that in the next year's uh, you know, uh, World Wrestling Championships, he gets that elusive gold medal, you know, which he could not get in the last four times. 
uh, you know silver and bronze are also not bad but gold is something that he must definitely be chasing pn cares fund so this is a fund that came under the lens and came under public scrutiny quite a lot during COVID-19 times because this was the fund where a lot of donations that people gave for COVID-19 relief went into. In fact, uh, so many government employees, you know, their salaries were cut proportionately and all that money went into PM Cares Fund. And there were civil society activists who inquired or tried to inquire about the transparency and accountability of all the money that was spent from this fund. And now, finally, a few people have been appointed as the trustees of PM Cares Fund, who the public has a lot of trust in. And one of them is Mr. Ratan Tata. So according to PMO, veteran industrialist Ratan Tata, former Supreme Court Judge K.T. Thomas, and former Deputy Lok Sabha Speaker Kariya Munda have been nominated as trustees of the PM Cares Fund. You know, one from judiciary, one from industry, and one from politics. People from diverse fields, nominated to take care of the PM Cares Fund. So PM Narendra Modi chaired a meeting of the Board of Trustees, which was attended by Home Minister Amit Shah and Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman, who are also the trustees of this particular fund. So during the meeting, Ratan Tata, Justice Katie Thomas, Kariya Munda were appointed as the trustees of PM Cares Fund. So these are the three names that are quite important and you need to remember those finally mr elvis ali so he's neither elvis presley has nothing to do with muhammad ali he this gentleman over here is mr elvis ali hazarika so he is from assam you know bhopen hazarika so you, you you could have guessed hazarika means he's from assam and also this sort of flag that he's holding has something written in assamese over here so mr elvis ali hazarika is a swimmer and he has become the first from the Northeast to cross the North Channel, which is a quite a daunting achievement to have. So it is a strait between Northeastern North Ireland and Southwestern Scotland, the English Channel, what you say. So his team clocked a timing of 14 hours, 38 minutes to achieve this feat. He has become the oldest Indian swimmer to cross the North Channel. According to uh, the Irish Long Distance Swimming Association, the distance is 34.5 kilometers. So he swam for 34.5 kilometers in the North Channel and he has crossed the North Channel. It took him 14 hours and 38 minutes to do so. So it requires a lot of preparation, you know, a lifetime of preparation, a lot of guts, perseverance, zeal and technique, which of course he would have mastered. And now he has this record of being the oldest Indian swimmer to do that. Quite a good achievement that he has. And I think we are all witnessing this sort of a thing for in the last uh, one year or let's say couple of years, when many Indians are showing achievements in some unconventional sports, whether it is swimming, whether it is javelin throw, whether it is badminton. So I'm happy that, you know, there is, uh, you know, other than cricket, there are so many other sports that are hogging the limelight now. And that is exactly what we need. Because in India, we, have, we are a lot of people, you know, we are the second most populous country in the world. Quite quickly, we are going to take over China by next year as the most populous country of the world. So we need, you know, to keep the nation as a healthy nation, we need diverse set of sports so that, you know, so many people adopt so many sports so that there can be a culture of uh, fitness in India so that it can actually reduce the disease burden of India and improve the human resources as we have seen like in the state of Haryana for example the culture has been that of wrestling boxing physical fitness and it is evident from the recent medal hall that we had at the Commonwealth Games majority of medals being from Haryana out of the 61 odd medals 18 plus medals were from Haryana itself which means that there is a sort of culture that has uh, that we have been able to infuse in Haryana. And that is a sort of approach that we need for every state of India. So that India's disease burden can reduce, India's overall fitness level can improve, and human resources can be quite better. So that was all for this week's Current Affairs. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Also share it with your friends. Also, if you have any suggestions, please let us know in the comments below. So one of the students is asking 
that uh, do they need to attend offline classes if, if they are already they have already done this thing so uh, there is a quite a lot more that we discuss in offline classes this is just a gist of the most important news there are quite a lot more news that we cover in our regular classes so if you do jo want to join those definitely you should join those this is not all that we have discussed here it is just a trailer of the picture which is in there which requires a lot of detailed deliberation which we do in the regular classes so that is all from my side manish mittal signing off thank you